Hey everybody, Dave here with another Pathfinder Rule Reminder for you. And actually today's Rule Reminder isn't just about Pathfinder, it can apply to D&D 5th Edition or Pathfinder 1st Edition or really any D20 base fantasy role-playing game other than I think 4th Edition D&D. Uh, because today we're going to be talking about the one inch square grids and diagonals and um, how that works. So the exact question that I was asked was, could you explain why diagonal distances are treated as further away than horizontal and vertical? I'm finding it hard to understand this logic as I'm thinking of it as real world perspective. If I walk 10 feet and then I walk another 10 feet, it doesn't matter if I turn 45 degrees between them, I still end up only walking 20 feet. And that's absolutely true. Yeah, it doesn't, it, you know, it's 45 degrees, but 45 degrees relative to what? I mean, if I, if I walk 10 feet and then I turn a little and I walk 10 more feet, I've walked 20 feet total. So why do we have this rule that when we're dealing with, um, with uh, tactical grids or the one inch grids, it's five feet of movement to move diagonally the first time and then 10 feet of movement to move diagonally the second time and alternating between the two. And the, the basic answer to that is because even though we're only moving 20 feet in that example, um, in this particular situation, we're not talking about how many feet we move, we're talking about how many squares we move. And we have to convert that 20 feet of total movement into squares. And the simple answer is that the distance between the opposite corners of a diagonal of a square or that's a longer distance than the distance between uh, or the length of any of the single sides of a square. So let me just bring up another screen and, and we'll illustrate this. So here we have a typical combat map. Each square is one inch length on each of the four sides. So if we were to draw a line from the bottom edge to the top edge or from the left edge to the right edge, each of those lines would be one inch in length. But now if we take the vertical line and we tilt it so that it is 45 degrees, we can clearly see that one inch is not gonna be long enough to reach the opposite corner. Instead, this line would need to be 1.414 inches. So the distance between corners of a square is 41.4% longer than the length of the side of the square. And this is where that rule of alternating between five foot and 10 foot diagonals comes from. When you alternate between those two links on a map, the final result is 50% longer provided you travel an even number of squares. And that's going to be close enough to the 41.4% increase in order for it to work on a tabletop. So going back to the question that was asked, if I walk 10 feet and then walk another 10 feet, it doesn't really matter if I, if I pivot 45 degrees between those two, it's still only 20 feet of movement. But again, we need to convert that into squares. So let's take a look at what happens when we place that on a map. We see that 20 feet vertically or horizontally is four squares. But if we take that same 20 foot line and plot it diagonally, we see that three squares is a closer but not perfect match for 20 feet of movement because the diagonal of a square is roughly 40% longer than its size. So that's it for today. Hopefully that illustration helped clarify this point. Why do we alternate between five and 10 foot links when we move diagonally is because the distance from the bottom left corner of a square to the upper right uh, corner of a square or vice versa or any diagonal is going to be longer and take more feet of distance to move than just strictly going by north, south, east, or west. Um, an, an area where you're going to see this occur that could have issues could be if you have a map where someone is going to want to get from one end of the map to the extreme other end of the map. If they do that diagonally and you only charge five feet of movement for every diagonal, then it's going to take a lot less movement to cross from one end of the map to the other than it would otherwise. Now, I do want to mention, because I'm sure it will come up in the comments, that this rule of alternating from five and 10 feet is actually not a rule that I enforce in my own games. Uh, and if you want to find out why that is, I'll make sure I leave a link in the description of this video that will take you to all of my house rules. And that's one of them that's included in that video. And I'll also make sure that I leave links in the description for all of my other videos that talk about diagonals. Uh, for example, uh, 10 feet of reach for a melee attack does not adhere to this alternating five and 10 uh, foot 
diagonal rule when you're making a melee attack with reach diagonally. And if you want to learn more, more about that, make sure you check out the link in the description. Also, make sure that you leave any of your questions about this in the comments section. And as always, I want to take a quick moment to say thank you to everybody out there who supports me, whether that's by liking these videos, subscribing to the channel, subscribing to the Patreon, leaving your comments, sharing these videos with your friends, it all adds up, and I greatly appreciate everything the community does to support me. With that, thanks for watching, take care, and happy gaming.